My name is Rognil Hutchison. I'm a historian, um, which is also the reason for why I haven't been much of an active LARPA for the last about 10 years, uh, because academia sort of ate me. There's something called publish and perish, and, or rather, let's just say publish and perish. <laughs> and if you add kids into that, you're dead. Uh, that's sort of the brief explanation. Uh, last time I organized, I was in America. America, we built the trash heap in, uh, no, it wasn't. That was the second last time. That was with Hanna, that we built a trash heap at, at the Jungstorge, close to where you were yesterday. We big, built a huge, you know, heap, big heap of trash and had people living in there for five days. That's how we did LARP in the olden days in the Nordics. That's the old Nordic LARP. Not uh, you do it for two days, no, two hours. Previously, we did it for nearly a week, well, five days. The second time, uh, the, but the last time I did a LARP was I made a LARP of my master thesis to make sure that not just the sort of very few who actually read master theses would read it. So I actually had 60 people living my master thesis, which was all about, <coughs> which was set in a small community in the middle of nowhere in Norway in 1800 and was all about the auction of uh, the bankrupt uh, first ever knitting factory. And it worked. They had a great time, I think. They haven't complained since. That was in 2002. So that was sort of my la last uh, part, uh, <coughs> my last making of a lot, but then I've been sort of tagging along and it's been where I've sort of run back home when I've been abroad or doing other stuff. LARP has always sort of been home amongst many other places. Um, so last year I was invited to do a speech that made me able to combine the two things that I probably most likely um, have, you know, burned the most, or been most passionate about, and that's both history and LARP, and how to mix this. And this was quite new for me. So you have to bear with me. I'm a historian. My, I usually work with people who've been dead for 200 or 300 years, and they don't reply. <laughs> um, so working on modern people, being alive, is sort of challenging, <coughs> because they, they might complain. Uh, hopefully they don't. So what I've done is do a very brief study that's currently in the whole publication process. And let's not talk about that, because it's been there for <coughs> six months. Unfortunately, well, anyways, but it's hopefully it will be coming at some point. But what I've done is to look at the learning outcomes from LARP and RPGs for history teaching. I put RPGs in a bracket because um, we're all LARPers, so I'm, I'm going to focus on that. But most what are RPGs? Role playing games. Like, okay. For me, it's RPGs. Okay. I've been talking to so many people in, yeah. RPG, role playing games. Uh, that's the sort of sitting around the table, being even more nerdy than we guys are. Maybe we're not nerdy anymore. Maybe we're cool. Anyways, um, so to get you all to the grit, nitty gritty bits about being a historian. Well, actually, this isn't about being a historian. This is about teaching history and the skills that we want as historians, that we want students um, and actually everyone, to have. And that's historical consciousness. And I've tried my best to translate from Danish. I should have put the quote here. I'm sorry. I've been a slob on my, on my <coughs> footnotes. You'll have to forgive me. Uh, but historical consciousness is, um, uh, uh, takes as a starting point that our perception of the past and our understanding of the present shapes our expectation <coughs> for the future. Um, so this is sort of what the uh, basis for understanding the world we're in. The past shapes how we perceive our present as well as our perceptions and our expectations of the future, which is why history is important. Um, and in Especially since about the 1990s, historical consciousness has taken up an increasingly larger part of the history curriculum, the teaching, what teachers are supposed to teach students at secondary schools. Is that what you call it, Vidragona? Secondary school? 
Before you start university? High school. High school. You know, the three, four years before you start university. Uh, and this has taken up a larger, an increasingly larger part of teaching, uh, of what teachers are supposed to teach their students. How uh, in Norway, the Nordics, and I'm not going to say with certainty the rest of the world in Europe, but it's sort of one of the trendy things. So I'm betting that at least quite a lot number of countries has this on, at least on their curriculum, if not an increasingly larger part. However, um, it's a bit of a challenge. Te many teachers find this a bit challenging and sort of ambitious to become <coughs> aware of how the past is, is shaping our way of understanding the present and our expectations of the future. And it's a bit woolly, which is possibly why we find it a bit difficult to to teach this. Um, so, what I've done is I've looked very briefly and very simply, and if you do sort of this sort of methods quite a lot, uh, I've been doing it in a very primitive way because I'm a historian and people tend to be dead when I study them. But um, so what I've looked at is if ro LARP and RPG, role playing games, can stimulate the development of historical consciousness and um, I'm how history teachers may draw on LARP and RPGs or role-playing games in their teaching and how this can be implemented. I'm very much, and I think this is because I'm a, I have this LARP background, I'm very much on uh, practical things. Theory, theory, theory is good. Philosophy, you have to make practical for me. I slept through Exfil. Um, I've done this by using as a starting point the curriculum for history in secondary schools or high schools, <coughs> the VEGE, the, uh, the Forberedene, and it has this terribly long name, I never remember. But it's this thing that it's the, it's the syllabus, the curriculum that you have to go through in order to get into university. So I've used that as a starting point and I made a questionnaire um, that sort of tests that ask questions relating to, to, to uh, learning outcomes linked to these aims. It's really incredibly simple. And then I've distributed it to the main uh, two, there's two uh, Facebook groups, one for LARP and one for role-playing games in Norway, with approximately, I think the role-playing game group has about 2,000 people, the LARP group has 1,000. Ish. Um, and out of these, approximately 6% replied, which isn't necessarily a large number. We can discuss representativity, but it's not bad if you look at med medical studies, they have even worse. <laughs> However, 6% is if you look at the number of people that are active in the groups, it's approximately 6%. So it's not, you know, we can use these results as an indication. We're getting the most active people, at least online. Um, and it's an indication. So we have to study more. We have to study more about this. Isn't this how we get money and funding? So our results must be und understood very indictively. Now, previous studies, again, I'm sorry, I've been terribly bad uh, on the footnotes, but... Um, well, I've referred to you quite a lot, and um, I'm not going to try the Polish <laughs> because I'm, I'm actually don't, don't know how to pronounce that. But anyway, few, uh, there have there have not been that many previous uh, studies looking at learning outcomes of LARPs and RPGs, and especially not for history. And the the studies that have been done show, as already mentioned, that self motivation has been a uh, positive result. People sort of feel more motivated when doing these things. Oh, I shouldn't take that off. That was my microphone. Sorry. Um, I'll leave that on. Uh, participation, leadership skills are also outcomes that are positive and that people experience that they master things. There are two Norwegian studies that have looked at the uh, outcomes for history, uh, teaching history. 
One is a master, study, uh, master thesis, another is an article. And well, the master thesis was written, she's now a teacher. Are you here? Oh, hi, thank you. Um, you concluded that it's an enormous amount of work for one teacher to do, to make you up, drag your class, willing or non-willing, off into the woods for a weekend or at least a night stay. And it's an enormous amount of work, but it's, you know, it, they learned something. It was fun, they had a good time, etc. Um, the other article, which was published this summer, uh, emphasizes the social skills that, that they learn, but questions more uh, the, um, the outcomes regarding teaching facts and the pro historical processes. Um, so what have I done? Well, I've not looked at classes. I've looked at us as a community, LARPers and role players. Um, so it's not really transferable to, to directly transferable to classroom. But I wanted to see what have LARPers and role players actually feel they they perceive that they've learned. And again, these are the most active people, or at least uh, the people who are most willing to fill out questionnaires which might not necessarily be the most active people in the community. There's a lot of old farts sitting around <coughs> and being nice and filling out the questionnaires. I can tell you that. There's a lot of people who haven't been incredibly active for the last five years who've filled out for the LOPs. Anyways, what I haven't translated this because I copy pasted this from my uh, Google questionnaire. It says here the, the results I have. Um, well, so overall, the question is, have you experienced that LARP has given you insights into culture and history, Norwegian and, and international? And there's an overwhelming number of people, 80% nearly, say, yes, we've learned something. That's good. And these are very simple results, but at least they indicate something. And these at least are able to put some something documenting that the people doing these things actually feel they perceive that they themselves have learned something, which is more than we have today. Um, I couldn't get online here, uh, so there should have been a nice graph here. Uh, but one of the requirements or, or points in the curriculum is that uh, teachers, uh, that students should Again, uh, I've tried to translate. Present a historic person and discuss how ideas and social structures impacted on the person's actions. This is about training people in empathy. Not necessarily, the thing is that by learning how people in the past were influenced by the social norms and restrictions, you get, you train empathy. Um, and that's actually what we do. We pretend, we, we, we present a historic person, at least for historic lots. We present a historic person. Um, and whether or not we actually discuss how the ideas and social structured, structures impacted is another question. And I'll return to that as one of the challenges. Uh, however, yes, we do play a person. And by interacting with the other players and the game structures, we actually also experience, we provide, we, we are provided with experiences um, of interacting and acting with the ideas and the social frameworks of the past. So yes, to some extent. Now the, the issue here, and I'm going to warn you about that because that's going to be my conclusion, is this bit here. Because we're actually not good at that. Oops, wrong way. <coughs> Secondly, this though is sort of the more, this is where the historian in me gets very happy because another aim that's, that students of history should manage is to um, uh, find historical uh, sources and material and actually look for them themselves. And on overall, I think it was, um, let's see if I have my, uh, 
65% of the role players and more than 90% of the LARPers had used had looked for sources and additional literature before going to their game. Now, I'm an academic, I've done some teaching. How many of my students have done that before going to a lesson? <laughs> like, look in your heart, how often did you do that? How often did I? Rarely. Very interestingly, it's, I've also asked what they looked at. Physical books, primary sources, you know, film, very popular. Uh, looking online, popular. Digital, I'd give it this, I just put in as a. This is the most, this is my, this is my toolbox. And I live of this for 20 years. This is the scanned primary sources. This is where the Gothic handwriting, the church parish records, the court records, this is where you get nerdy. <laughs> this is the spicy stuff. And quite a lot, large number of, especially LARPers, had been in there. And that's actually quite well done. You need actually special skills, or you need to be willing to acquire those skills. Um, then there's also assessing historical material, which is, I misspelled that, haven't I? Anyway. Um, I blame the 18th century, they didn't have spelling rules in the 18th century, so... Anyway, assessing historical material is especially important today. Uh, Trump is a good explanation, uh, example, all other media, all, other, all the present discussions. Being able to assess the information that you're provided. And I've asked, have you done conscious assessments of the material you've found related to um, the, the source of the literature's um, presentation, how it presented a fact. Uh, and 75% of the LARPers have said yes. They've actually thought about what they found. They didn't just swallow it. That's also quite well done. They mightn't have, you know, I don't know how they reflected on it, but they've at least done it. This is where we have to go for more in-depth in um, questions. I'll be quick. And again, reflecting on the use of historical ma uh, material. Uh, here, they answer 80% rep uh, reply that they've uh, looked at, they've considered the presentation, uh, they've reflected on how the material is presented in relation to historic the uh, theme. And here, 66 have actually reflected on how um, uh, their own perceptions of the past have been formed. They've actually started thinking about their own experiences, which is really good. So, I'm getting to the end. Like, LARP is clearly, those who do it, LARP and role-playing games feel, they do it because they feel they've actually learned something. They feel they have an outcome. They, they do it for many reasons, but they, they do actually <laughs> feel they've learned something and reflected something and that it's given, them, given something to them. And it's all skills related to historical consciousness. So, but there are some challenges. Firstly, making a LARP, especially the sort of going away for two days with a, with a stay, uh, would you say it's slightly suicidal? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's an enormous amount of work. So how do you solve that? Well, you can hire someone, or um, this, if there's museum people here, I think that's sort of my best answer. I'd actually go, say, speak to museums. They have the historians, and I'm returning to the historians bit again. They also have the housing, the dress, the cold shoes, and the terrible food. And that way you can get the going away overnight experience without actually going away too long. And you have to, don't have to do all the work. Someone else does all the work. And where the teacher just has to do it for one time, or just does it once for their one class. The museum, who has all these old houses and whatever, can sort of manufacture this and, and, and not get exhausted. 
Uh, thirdly, now secondly, in teaching and history didactics and hi uh, history teaching, there are learning goals very specifically. I, when I work with schools, the main go learning goal that I work on is mastering or having knowledge uh, of Norwegian 18th century economic development, 15 to 1800. That's the learning outcome that I focus on, because that's my period when I focus on school. Now, in LARP and role-playing games, we don't have that. You don't need to learn anything, actually, wandering around in your you know, knitted underwear that itches. But we can put that in, so it's not really a problem. Now, the challenge here, here on historical LARPs, or on LARPs, I'm speaking about historical LARPs. I'm not going to wander off into anything else. The challenge for historical LARPs within teaching or education is that Sometimes or often, the organisers are not historians. And history, unlike what most of society often seem to think, is a skill that anyone can learn because you're just interested. But this is actually, in, you know, you, there are skills, there are certain, there's a certain set of things you, you master through your education. Um, so, it's, I would actually say, and because of these, there's very, this historical consciousness, which, which is very much a set of skills. It's a handiwork. You're an artisan doing this. You are actually an artisan working with sources. You might not be there with a hammer, but your hammer is a different set of tools. You use different sets of tools. So, I'd actually say that when doing educational games and history, for history teaching, it's vital that there is a historian present. And most primarily, one is the introduction. Sarah, you were saying that you, you, you assume that your students have read. You don't, but, but you have the book. Supposed is a, to have read. They're supposed to have read, yes. They're supposed to have read. I, I hope some of them have brought their book with them at the very least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, because you, you have to present something beforehand, they have to have a certain set of knowledge and that's where you need the historian or the book. Then you can have the game and whoever runs the game is one thing and then after that you don't learn anything without the reflection and that is also, that's most, I think that's so far one of the things that I've seen lacking in the historical games, at least in Norway. There's lots of debrief but it's all about bleed and all these funny modern words. Sorry, I'm old. We didn't do stuff like that in the old days. You know, we had a stiff upper lip. But if you do educational games in history, bleed is one thing. But if they're actually going to learn something, do the reflection. Have them talk about how is this, how is the 18th century, the Viking Age, how is living in that time different from living in this? Because if you don't, it's just a game. The learning process is in the reflecting. The learning process is not in the game. It's in the reflections afterwards. It's when you're forced to think about who would I be if I had lived 400, 500, 200 years ago. That is when you learn. And that, if you're doing educational LARP, never, ever skimp on reflection. Skip the game. The most important thing to have people learn is reflection. Thank you. <laughs>